Yeah, the the one area where you do kind of go off that path is with constraints. Uh, how how powerful are those? Like, how much is there? And are you kind of like trying to keep yourself yourself constrained while doing that and not uh, expanding that API too much? Um, I mean, I I definitely don't think there's going to be like a ton of additions to the like at least like what the syntactic constraints that'll be built into the language that you can, you know, write as like number greater than five or whatever. Um, they are really powerful. Um, I mentioned that like archetype has this like built in type system like TypeScript where it can compare types to one another. That includes constraints also. So like um, it's kind of like this extension of TypeScript type system where, you know, if you say like, well, would a type that's a number greater than five be assignable to a type that's a number greater than zero, like it would, because any number greater than five will be greater than zero, but the reverse wouldn't be true. Um, and same thing, like if you intersect like a number divisible by two with a number divisible by three, it'll be a number divisible by six. Um, and it can like determine any kind of assignability like that, including runtime, uh, like run what people would think of uh, historically as like runtime constraints, but like it really brings that whole like type level introspectability aspect of it to include like those kind of like set based extensions for ranges and divisors and and regex and, and different things like that um there's also like transformations there's morphs like that was an yeah, it's kind of like uniquely adapt the type system to be able to accommodate like well what does it mean in a type to say like you know it accepts a string and then that string will be transformed to a number or something like that so there's some unique like rules around that but essentially everything kind of like is derived from these like very core principles of like set based types that are the same principles that the uh, TypeScript type system is derived from. And I, I also don't have to worry too much about like diverging from TypeScript in terms of, I guess, extending it to say like, okay, well now it can handle ranges because yeah, maybe someday TypeScript will support ranges and, and you can say like a number greater than zero or something. They could totally do that because I've literally written the logic that they would need to do that. <laughs> uh, so like they could definitely add that and it would totally work for them. Um, they would need to write some like additional logic that says how, when you write like a JS expression or something, like if you say like number greater than zero, and then I add some positive number to it, can it figure out that it's like still going to be a number greater than zero or whatever? Like they would have to write some unique logic around that. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's pretty much, it, it could totally fit into what they have. Um, and like, this is very clear, like set based definition of what should happen where I don't have to worry that they're going to like build it in a way that wouldn't be compatible with what I did because there's just like a it's like a kind of like a mathematical thing where like there's no it couldn't be wrong like right there's only one real answer to like how two ranges intersect or like how two divisors intersect or like whether one thing implies another um what i have to worry about though is like some of the like you know, quirks of the language where uh when i'm trying to build a robust type system like do i really want to carry over i don't know the idea that like an empty object like if you do the like object literal syntax with like um with like no property specified in it, like in TypeScript that would, it could be assigned like a number or a string or anything because it's just checking to see if it's something that would allow property access. This is one of these things that like people always get tripped off on in TypeScript. And I'm like, do I really want to like maintain that? And I actually went with, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I think it creates a lot of problems like internally also. So like that's a case where I actually have to decide like I'm going to diverge for existing functionality from like what TypeScript has done because I think this will be more intuitive even though it creates some inconsistency, like the overall experience will be more intuitive. Um, like if I don't maintain that feature and there's like a few other things like numeric keys where it's very weird. Like in JavaScript, you don't have numeric keys, but in TypeScript, you can say like key of an array and you can get like string numbers and numeric numbers back. And it's like very confusing. I'm like, those aren't really a distinct thing at runtime. So like, how do I represent that? And so there's a few areas like that where I have to be like, do I want to like do what TypeScript did how much of like a breaking change would it be for me to like diverge here and do something that I think would be more intuitive and be easier to use? For the most part, there's like very few cases where I had to do that, but there are a few that like, those are always painful and I'm like, oh no, like I can't, I can't like, you know, I have this like nice new type system that like it works in this very precise way and you know, has all these guarantees like TypeScript, like why did you do this? Now you're putting this awful <laughs> position of how you decide whether to maintain that like compatibility with this particular feature or uh, to do something that I, I feel like will will make it easier for users, but um, yeah, those are those are the things that keep me up at night, I guess. <laughs> Fun problem to have. Uh, well, as we're wrapping up, what's next for Archetype? Uh, what do you what do you got planned? Yeah, so the biggest thing that I'm working on right at this moment is, uh, well, I, I guess I've pretty much wrapped it up now. Is is pattern matching? Um, 
this is a really cool feature because <laughs> I think it's like something that I've planned for uh, a long time and I actually wanted to originally add it to like the 2.0 release. Um, but there were just like too many questions and I wanted to like ship the 2.0 release a lot. So I'm glad that I did that. Um, but I knew this would be like a fast follow on feature because it was pretty much already ready. And um, if you think about pattern matching, right, it's like, is it this? Like, if it's this case, like, do this. If it's this case, do this. Well, like, isn't that already kind of just like validation, basically, <laughs> with like a little bit of an additional wrapper around it? And so it's a pretty small feature in some ways where like, um, I'm really just getting the benefit of like the whole type system stuff. But here's where it gets, I just like love this. It's so cool. So like, here's where it gets really exciting, like what you can do with like a runtime type system, right? If you like write some logic that says like, if it's, you know, if, if A, then like, you know, uh, you know, run this function, if B, like run, run this function, et cetera, et cetera. Like that by definition, like has to be executed linearly, right? So like, let's say there's a hundred cases, like you have to go and go through each one sequentially to check if they match because, uh, you know, by definition, you have to run them in order. Like that's how pattern matching works. Um, but like, because of our types type system, we can actually check, um, like which branches are disjoint, meaning like they'll never have any overlap. Uh, and for those branches, we can use the switch statement and like, we're using a discriminated union, right. But like, we can actually check them in constant time. If we can internally check and guarantee that there'll never be any overlap between the two branches. Um, we can like check, like traverse, like a pattern matching expression in constant time. That's like a hundred cases that have to be guaranteed that like any matching case, like earlier in the expression will be run before any that occurs later. But because we have that kind of like deep introspectability, we can say like, okay, well, sure, they have to be run linearly, but because we know these two things can never co-occur, we can just skip right to like the 78th branch and like run that one because we know that since that one matched, like none of these other previous ones can match. So there's like stuff that just like, there's so many possibilities, I think, with having this kind of like runtime introspectable type system that like, you know, I, I JavaScript, I think the language itself is working on like a pattern matching um uh, it's a proposal for like adding that to the language but it could never do anything like this because there's no like type system or like set based type comparison logic in javascript right so like even if they added this like even if you wrote it in native syntax like you would never be able to like traverse a pattern matching expression in constant time but because we have the ability to like compare these like basically it's like an ordered union right and like all of this kind of just like falls out of that and i love stuff like that where like the type system itself is so powerful. So sometimes you can just like build these like thin little wrappers around it that do things that just feel like it'd be totally impossible, like in any other context um, and like seems just magical. And of course, like it's just very satisfying to build that because it's so much less work than like building the actual type <laughs> system, but like what you get out of it feels like really, really significant. So I'm going to release that this week. Um, and I think people will be really, really excited about like, it, it kind of has the same level of, um, the same level of like syntactic, like, oh, wow, it's like so concise and like so readable as the like, it's the, it's the core archetype of BI, right? Like you can like write keys that are, you know, type definitions and stuff like that. But then also it has that like performance benefit where you can just get performance that you would like never be able to get, like even natively in this case, like writing like a linear um, uh, pattern matching expression. So like, I'm very, very excited to share that with people. That's super exciting. I, I'm a big uh, TS pattern user. I use it a lot and um, the performance characteristics probably aren't super great. So I tested it a little bit against this and like, it's it's totally reasonable. Um, you know, the performance, I, I'll put it in the category of like, it's good. Um, and like, there's, there's nothing wrong with it and people should not not use it because of the performance uh, for the most right. part. Um, but like, I, I think maybe even more so for like pattern matching than for for a lot of like validation in general, it, it's pretty likely to be like on a part of your code that might be on the hot path. If you're like checking a certain shape of object over and over and like processing it, like yeah. that could make a, a pretty big difference. And um, yeah, so it, 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 I think it just has a lot of potential and I, I'm excited for other library authors to, you know, start integrating more and like leveraging some of that introspectability more as well, because it's just one of those things where like JavaScript has never really had a like, runtime type system before that allowed this kind of stuff. And um, I know that I can't like, I can, I have some ideas for stuff that I can build with it, but like, I'm sure that other people could come up with really cool ideas for things that, you know, that would enable as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, more integrations and figuring out, uh, hearing from other people about more cool ways that they've been able to use it as well.